three, two, one. Good evening, members, and welcome to this meeting of full council. Straight into the agenda, and first item is the roll call, please. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Councillors Allen. Present. Ash Edwards. Present. Bates. Bates. Councillor Bates. Bell CJ. Present. Bell CM. I'm present. Um, <laughs> Councillor Alan, Alison Bennett. Present. Councillor Liz Bennett. Present. Bootrop. Present. Radbury. Yeah, present. Brown. Councillor Brown. Present. Branston. Present. Cartwright. Councillor Cartwright. Chapman. Present. Clark. Present. Cogunnel White. Councillor Cogunnel White. Councillor Coote. Present. Cornish. Present. Cromie. Councillor Cromie. DeBell. Present. Jamia. Present. Dempsey. I think is coming later, Vice Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Eggleston. Present. Ellis. Present. Eves. Present. Gibbs. Present. Gibson. Present. Hatton. Present. Henwood. Present. Hicks. Present. Hillier. Present. Hussain. Present. Jackson. Present. Knight. Present. Laband. Present. Andrew Lee. Given apologies. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Anthea Lee. Present. Councillor Llewellyn Burke. Present. McNaughton. Present. Marsh. Councillor Marsh. Apologies. Apologies. Um, Councillor Mockford. Present. Peacock. Present. Phillips. Present. Paulfer. Present. Salisbury. Councillor Salisbury. Smith. Sparashi. Present. Stockwell. Present. Wetman. Present. I believe the chairman is here, Councillor Trumbull. Present. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Walker. Councillor Walker. Councillor Webb. Councillor Webb. Councillor Webb's in hospital. Right, thank you. Councillor Webster. Present. And Councillor Whitaker. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. And moving on now to the meeting explanation. Um, and I go, as usual, to the Head of Regulatory Services, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I hope members can hear me. I'm told my link is unstable. Um, this meeting is being held in accordance with the uh, COVID virtual meeting regulations. Members are in charge of their own microphone, but the Chairman will call members to speak as and when. At the end of the meeting, um, please stay in place 
and voting tonight will be with the for and against buttons, which you already used to. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Clark. <coughs> Excuse me. And now to the opening prayer. And Vice Chairman again, please. Councillor Belsey. Thank you, Chairman. O oh Lord, grant us courage to strive for what is right and good. Courtesy to listen to those of different opinion. Strengthen us through difficulties and pressures and guide us in our deliberations so that we may act in the interests of all in our district to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Moving now to item three on the agenda, receiving questions from members of the public pursuant to Council Rule Procedure 9. We have one question this evening from Ms. Deland Long. Ms. Deland Long, are you in the chamber? I am. Thank you and welcome. <clears throat> Perhaps I can just outline first the procedure for public questions. Um, you have provided your question beforehand. Thank you for doing so. You have two minutes to put that question. And that question, as it's outlined here, must be a question and not statements. That question will then be directed by the chairman to the relevant cabinet member who will answer that. Mr. Landlong, you then have um, the opportunity to ask a supplementary question, which must be related to the answer given to you by the cabinet member. And again, if you should uh, make statements during that period, rather than ask a question, I will stop you and not ask you to continue further. The answer to that supplementary question will be given in writing to you and to members. I hope that is clear. So, Mr. Landlong, please now put your question. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I've noticed that some council members openly acknowledge that they don't feel well informed about climate change and sustainability, and worryingly seem to feel fairly comfortable with this. Given that climate and ecological impacts now need to be factored in to all council decisions, Will the council commit to ensuring that all council members and staff receive training and support in this important area? And could the council work to achieve a sharing of information, training and expertise on these issues between councils across the county in order to make the best use of these valuable resources? Thank you, Mr. Dan Long. Uh, Councillor Webster, I believe you're answering this question. Thank you, Chairman, I am, and thank you for the question and the opportunity to provide an answer. Um, climate change and sustainability is an important part of the Council's work. It touches all our services and is, in, as, and is factored into Council decisions. The Council provides training and development for both councillors and officers. Councillors receive training and development from their first months as a councillor in their induction and then throughout their role. The training program for councillors is driven by councillors. The member development working group chaired by councillor Sandy Ellis considers learning opportunities to support councillors in fulfilling their role. Identifying training needs is also a responsibility of group leaders who can request training. Training has most recently included in the last month, district-wide design guide supplementary planning document. This specifically included key elements on sustainability in design and layout of developments. The member development working group will continue to provide to, to review councillors' training needs and I'm confident that this will continue to include the important issues of sustainability and climate change. Officer training is reviewed regularly as part of our performance management framework. It includes learning on new policies, changes in government guidance and continued professional development. Our focus on this issue doesn't stop there. 
we will also shortly be speaking to the parishes on building regulation standards, particularly on energy efficiency, to brief them on the government's plan to include new energy efficiency standards to lower carbon emissions. Finally, it is normal practice for officers and councillors to share information across the council boundaries locally, across the UK and internationally, and to build on best and emerging practice. We will continue to do this to ensure our learning informs our decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Webster. Uh, Mr. Lan Long, do you have a supplementary question? I do. Um, shall I go ahead? Please do, and as I say, that must relate to Councillor Webster's yeah. answer. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Webster, for your reply. Um, could you let me know what the Council's expenditure has been this current financial year on training for members and, and staff on climate change, sustainability and biodiversity loss? Um, and I'm interested to know to what degree that training has been optional. Um, I noticed that the, you, you, you said that the um, training programme is driven by councillors. So I'm just, I would be interested to know that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long Long. So I will ask Councillor Webster to um, respond to that in writing. But thank you for your questions. Um, Mr. Lan Long, I'm sure now one of the members of Democratic Services, the officers, will assist you in leaving the chamber. But thank you for your questions and good evening. Okay, members, moving forward now to item four on the agenda, which is the minutes of the council held on 3rd March 2021. These are at pages five to 16 in your pack. Uh, I've received no notifications on these, so I assume there's no matters arising. So I will take us straight to the vote using your voting buttons as you know how. Uh, the 20 seconds for that starts now. Okay. 20 seconds has passed. I'm waiting for the result. Which I assume is coming. <laughs> no. Okay, we have 42 in favour, so those minutes are accepted. Thank you. Moving now to item five, to receive declarations of interest from members in respect of any matter on the agenda. Do I have any declarations? I have one from Councillor Hillier. Councillor Hillier, please. Thank you, Chairman. Just in relation to item eight, the Hayward Seath Master Plan, um, there's a joint bit of working at West Sussex County Council are closely involved and I'm a West Sussex County Council member. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Councillor Bates, please. Yes, Mr Chairman, mainly to see if I've got a connection. I'd say, <laughs> say yes to uh, the meeting and I have had my hand up since the start of the meeting. Ah, well, I can hear you perfectly well, Councillor Bates, so I assume you have a connection. Uh, but I'm also assuming you don't have any declarations of interest. Councillor Bradbury, please. Yeah, the same as Councillor Hellier, Chairman. Thank you. I have no further declarations, so I'm assuming... Councillor, uh, yeah. Chairman, I have had my hand up for some time. It's Councillor Brunston. In respect of what, Councillor Brunsden? Um, well, first of all, I couldn't access the point to um, to vote on the last item for some reason, um, so I put my hand up. But I would also at this point like to make a declaration that I am a county councillor for West Sussex. 
Thank you. And Thank I can't stop. The, the host has asked me to start my video, and I can't because the broadband le whack width is just not um, broad enough to to. I'll get keep chucking being chucked out. So I've got to stick with just video with uh, just audio. I'm sure you will manage very well, Councillor Bronson. Thank Technology you. Technology moves in mysterious ways. Thank you for that. Um, and in fact, I've got strange pages appearing all over my screen now. They've gone. Um, okay, so we have no further declarations. Yes, we do. We have one from Councillor Bennett. Thank you very much, Chairman. Just to add my declaration for West Sussex County Council as a member. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have no further declarations, so I'm assuming all of those have been noted. We move on now to item six, to consider items that the chairman agrees to take as urgent business. I have none. And now item seven, which is chairman's announcements. And curiously, I have a request from Councillor Ash Edwards to speak. Councillor Ash Edwards, please. Thank you very much, um, Chairman. Um, this is the, the part of the meeting where I embarrass you. Um, because, members, this is uh, Councillor Trumbull's final full council meeting um, as chairman in advance of the uh, annual council meeting, which will be our, our next time we're all together when, when we will elect a, a new chairman. Um, so this is a slightly weird uh, presentation, mainly on account of the fact that the gifts have already been delivered to Councillor Trumbull in advance. Um, uh, but on behalf of the whole council, um, I'm delighted to be making a virtual presentation to Councillor Trumbull to thank him for all of his service as chairman. Um, chairman, you've given two distinguished years service in the role, and I'm sure you would look back at your first year um, as a fairly traditional chairmanship, um, meetings in person, civic engagements, charitable events, being able to welcome royalty to, to the district. All the sorts of normal things that you were able to do and that the chairman would quite rightly expect to be able to do. Um, and you chose excellent charities to support in the Royal Marsden and Woodlands Mead. Um, and I, I think we all know that the fundraising you did uh, will have made a, a real difference to both of those incredibly important causes. The last year perhaps couldn't be filed under a normal chairmanship. Chairing council meetings with 54 people is challenging at the best of times. To do it virtually across several pages of the computer screen uh, is uh, quite a tall order. Um, but throughout, you have chaired in a calm, fair and professional manner, uh, ensuring that all members have had the opportunity to uh, contribute and to be heard. Um, and so a huge thank you uh, from all of us um, for that and the way in which you have uh, overseen our proceedings. Um, and I'd like to thank all of those who've donated towards the uh, chairman's gift, which as it can't be seen in a, in a handover, includes a commemorative shield and a number of local uh, delicacies. And chairman, I hope you will enjoy those along with Mrs. Trumbull, who uh, I know has supported you fully uh, throughout. And uh, with thanks, um, I'm not quite sure how, how a round of applause uh, works on Zoom, <laughs> Chairman. It's probably best that we don't try it too loudly. <laughs> oh, um, but thank you uh, from all of us for your service. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you for those kind words, Councillor Ash Edwards. Um, oh dear, I, I have a notification from Councillor Pulfer. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not. Um, okay, well. How can I respond to that? Um, yes, it's, it has been. This, this is indeed my last full council meeting as chairman. Um, perhaps I may just reflect on these past two years. And indeed, that oft quoted curse comes to mind, may you live in interesting times. and. There's absolutely no question that these have been interesting times. We've lived through the worst pandemic of the past 100 years, and this has impacted all of our lives in dramatic ways. And tragically, it's taken too many before their time. And most certainly, it's dramatically impacted this council and all that it does and how it does it. We all of us know how this council has had to adapt its priorities, its finances and working practices. And 
we now run council and committee meetings, as Councillor As Edward said, in very different ways. And that's an example of how we've had to change. And I think you alluded to the fact that anyone who's had to chair one of these virtual meetings knows that it brings its very own unique challenges. Um, unquestionably, this past year, we've all gained valuable new skills, but I do think we've lost something through the lack of interpersonal interaction. That will return, we hope. Also during this past year, as you alluded to, Councillor Ash Edwards, uh, civic life has virtually ceased. And normally that's a very large part of a chairman's role. It's a valuable ambassadorial role that cements relationships between the council and other organizations. And I think importantly, it, it brings the council into the lives of many individuals. And this past year, I've not been able to fulfill that role as I would have hoped. So it has been a time of learning and challenges. And that's certainly been true of the meetings in this chamber, both the real chamber and this virtual chamber. And I think it's fair to say that politics have been more to the fore this past two years than at any time during my years as a councillor. Now, of course, positive aspects to that, it's, it's right to challenge, it's right to question, consider alternatives. No, no doubt about that. But there have been times when perhaps those politics have got in the way of our putting the good of the people first, and that's why we're here. And perhaps all of us, me included, should consider and reflect whether we consistently put the good of the people first. What has been consistent over this past two years has been the excellent advice and support I've received from Catherine, Tom, and the officers of the Democratic Services team. A sincere thanks to you all. And I've also valued the great support that I've received from our Vice Chairman, Margaret. Margaret, whilst we were running meetings in the chamber, um, you kept me on track. And this past year, I've very much valued your support and reflection after some of our particularly trying council meetings. Thank you. And my thanks to you also, members, because sometimes council meetings have been procedural quagmires and you've shown great patience and forbearance whilst we've worked through those. And all chairmen have their foibles, and as you may have noticed, um, I'm particularly keen on standards, and I thank you all for accepting them. Councillor Ash Edwards mentioned um, the present, and thank you, members, for the very generous presents which were delivered to my home. Um, I'm not quite sure what premium gin and a large credit lodged with my wine merchants say about me, but certainly it was very well received, as were the beautiful flowers, and here they are, I'll show you, the beautiful flowers for Judy, my long-suffering wife, and this uh, interesting memento of my time inscribed as chairman of the council. What more can I say? Um, it's been, and I, I mean this generally, it's been a huge privilege and honor to serve this council as chairman. And members, I now look forward to further challenges. Thank you very much. And with that, let us now move back to the agenda. Um, we move on to item eight which is the Haywards Heath Town Centre Master Plan Supplementary Planning Document. Uh, Councillor McNaughton, you're proposing this. 
Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Yes, I'm happy to propose the acceptance of the Haywards Heath Town Centre Master Plan um, as a supplementary planning document. An awful lot of work has gone into this document and I thank all those involved, in, including the scrutiny committees and of course everybody else who's had input into the document. But it is a, a, a document that will be used to assess the planning applications within that area and we will be looking for the best policy, best possible outcome for the centre of Haywards Heath. So thank you, Chairman. I do would like to move that we accept this Haywards Heath Master Plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. Um, Councillor LeBand, you're seconding this. Um, yes, Chairman, and I, I'd like to um, reserve my right to speak at the end of the debate, if I may, please. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Um, members. We have first notification from Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, please. Councillor Brown, I believe you may be muted. I hope not, Chairman. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now perfectly clearly. I get near the microphone. Thank you. Um, I have, have no problem uh, with and welcome Appendix Two modifications to the uh, Tibbles Civic Appendix, Appendix 1 Supplementary Planning Document, except that there is absolutely no attribution to the Scrutiny Committee anywhere in Appendix 2, uh, the reason column 4 for the amendment. So um, I feel they've been slightly ignored, the work of the Scrutiny Committee. It seems remarkable that the Tibbled Civic SPD was originally produced without the advice of West Sussex County Council or Metrobus. No cognizance of cycling standards uh, was taken into account either. The heart of the master plan relies on the premise to discourage through traffic in South Road and the Broadway predicated on creating congestion by unnecessary widening of pavements and narrowing of the highway. Metrobus Business Development Officer Lewis Jackson informed us that there, there is insufficient width to enable buses to even pass one another in the scheme proposed, and there was no consideration at all of bus services as such. CPRE Sussex appe appealed to challenge the council to step back from progressing this depressing proposal and undertake a careful analysis of how to make a low transport neighbourhood. Uh, strategy work, quoting, and quoting again from CPRE, they also advise on their website, neither the draft master plan nor its accompanying strate strategic environmental assessment screening report make a single reference to planning for climate change, transport decarbonisation, reduce, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, air pollution or noise, and these are all fundamental to creating a better place over the next decade for people to live and work in and to visit. A plan that does not have those as core stated objectives with policies to give them effect does not serve local residents or the planet well. Councillor Brown, um, Councillor Brown, may I uh, interject, please? As you know, we have two, Could I we have two minutes. So can I please ask you to draw uh, your question to a close? Uh, Councillor, uh, uh, Chairman, um, I have, I've been speaking for two minutes and 28 seconds, and you therefore I, I, I regard your introduction as being non-incorrect. Uh, um, I think... I, think, I forget... Of my stopwatch at the minutes. beginning of speaking, thank you. Right. Then continue, for, continue until three minutes are up. Thank you, Councillor. Well, three minutes are now up because we've spent 30 seconds. Well, no, you have time. another... If, if, if you had two minutes and 28 seconds, let's not be pedantic, Councillor Brown. You have another 32 seconds. Please continue. Thank you very much. The changes to, this, to the report proposed and sent to all members should ensure that the role and work done by, and by the recommendations of the Scrutiny Committee are included, but they're not. I want to thank Councillor Laban for his hard work chairing the two Scrutiny Committee meetings referred to in the background papers. 
Um, and the amendment to this Tibble Civic uh, SPD agreed by Councillor McNaughton are an improvement, but I will not be supporting this uh, motion with my vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, I will move on to Councillor Cartwright, please, and then return to Councillor McNaughton. Councillor Cartwright. Uh, first, a, a, a minor point. I'm afraid I was a little late to a technical hitch. Um, I missed uh, your final uh, peroration, Chair, but I just add uh, my personal thanks for your sharing. And uh, I've shared the grief in Burgess Hill for two years, so I know a bit of what it's like. So all the best for your retirement. Thank As for the plan, uh, just a minor general point. Um, I think, you know, it, it's, it's not really a good time for planning because we've had so much change. The impact of COVID and the like is going to have such a major effect on the town centre. Um, it's a good strategy. Great. But I mean, we, I think just one has to recognise that um, we are in a situation where we will have to take it step by step and recognise the fact that there are going to be... Uh, course corrections to courses on a fairly regular basis and you know that our experience in Burgess Hill has been you know really a desperate effort to keep the shops going and keep things open and to to get people to fill up um, the the empty vacant spaces but I'm sure my friend and colleague uh, Councillor Eggleston will, will uh, illuminate everybody on what we've been doing in Burgess Hill very successfully I'd point out anyway but uh, thank you uh, for, for allowing me to make the point. Thank you, Councillor Cartwright. Councillor McNaughton, do you have any thoughts on those two uh, issues? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> on the first comments, of course, this is a master plan solely for the centre of Haywood Heath. And what we don't do in master plans is to duplicate other policies that are governed by other people. The bus routes and that, where they go, are down to the bus companies. But we did try to make sure we can get the buses through. If, if they say they can't get two pass, buses past, then I'd have to agree with them, but we will look at that. But what I would say is we can't duplicate every single thing. Climate change and everything else in planning will be dealt with at planning committees because of the uh, building regs incorporate most of the issues including noise and everything else. So yes, it's not something that we would add in at nauseam because this document is there to encourage people to come into Mid-Sussex as, as, as businesses and everything else and to support the town centre. Uh, we wouldn't want to put them off by duplicating everything that is in other documents and other responsibilities. This is solely for the town centre and we will include what Councillor Brown has said when it comes to determining any particular planning application as they come along. Um, and for Mr Cartwright, I'm, I'm glad, and it must be hard work as well for Burgess Hill and all the encouragement you can do to give, give the shops and the, the traders in Burgess Hill good luck to you. But thank you for your comments. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Thank you Councillor McNaughton. Councillor Bates, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman, uh, Town Centre Master Plan. I agree one is needed, but this is very weak plan. My family have been in the town for the past century and I have witnessed the evolution from a market town. My first plan was in 1961, which identified two crossings were needed over the railway and since that time we've built one. I am unhappy with some residents unable to engage with the consultation and I feel I need to be proactive raising issues in the future. The plan is not dealing with the future of the high street, fewer shopping trips and stores closing. In addition, the traffic proposals do not resolve the fact that there is a relief road, but the traffic is still passing through the town. There is no proposals to deal with that in this plan. One of my interests is cycling, and I note that the proposal for a cycle route off 
Paramount Road, uh, but does not continue into Broadway, which should be pedestrianized, as I feel it is a restaurant area and not a critical transport route. Finally, the Clare Hall. In theory, it is now closed, but with little intention to reinstate its use. And I could see that we'll be talking about this new Clare Hall come 2031, when we are dealing with the next plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bates. And Councillor Jackson, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I've read the report and I, I welcome it and uh, I will support this at the, at the vote. But I want to make it quite clear that it is just a starting point. There's been quite a lot of talk in terms of the changes in retail habits of the general public, which means more and more shopping will be done online, more people will be working from home. And so therefore, to increase the amount of people going to the high street will probably mean to have more people living very close to the high street. So therefore, perhaps less retail and more um, accommodation to be built in the high street area. And that's something obviously which need to be discussed and also added as an amendments in future to the particular plan. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Um, Councillor McNaughton, do you have any comments on those two points, or uh, two uh, questions? Um, yes, the railway and, and crossings over it, um, we, we weren't, our plan didn't go as far as that. The railway line the, is not our particular position to put uh, foot bridges over it. As for the cycle routes, I know Councillor Bates did bring this up at the scrutiny meeting. And of course, we will continue to look at the connections between cycle routes. And that is an ongoing issue for the whole of the district, not just for the master plan for Haywood Seath. Uh, the cycle route only covers a tiny bit, as he did acknowledge. But we will obviously be looking to join up cycle routes wherever possible. And that work is ongoing across the whole of the district, not just in, in Haywood Seath. Um, Clare Hall, I'm sorry, I can't comment on that. It's not shut at the moment. It's being used by the NHS. They've extended, they've asked for an extension. Uh, Clare Hall's never been a, a, a position for the master plan. It was in the in the last effort and it was it remains the same as a development opportunity and that's all. And to be quite honest, uh, it's not for me to comment any further on that one. Um, uh, Mr. Jackson and, and the high street and getting people into the shops and bringing them into the town centre. Yes, you're right. And there is a feeling from a lot of people that we do need more town centre accommodation. Um, there is quite a lot going on in Haywood Seath, certainly close to, close to and around the station, which there is some, a lot of flatted development going on. So yes, we, we do need to make sure that there is a mix of not only residential and commercial, but also leisure facilities and other venues for them to go to. So thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. Um, Councillor Cornish, please. Thank you, yeah. Chair. Um, I just want to say that um, I, I support Councillor Brown's points and some of the other points as well around the changing nature of the high street. Um, but I just wanted, reading through the report, I just saw on page 26, um, it clearly states that Haywards Heath lacks a coherent, identifiable and legible cycle network. Um, and I know this has been laboured, but I, I think it's still worth it, um, that it still doesn't. Um, and on page 43, there are just mentions of considerations. And I know Councillor McNaughton has already highlighted that these are being worked through. Um, but also on page 59, the gateways and wayfinding signage make little mention of, of the cycle route um, with no plot on the map 
I know there's a separate map in terms of connecting Cookfield and Hayward Heath, but no plot on the map or associated key through the town. Um, so I've, I've, I think there is still a lot of work to be done on the uh, connectivity for pedestrians and cyclists through the town. And I think, as is highlighted at the beginning on page 26, we're falling way short of what is needed in the Hayward Heath. So thank you very much for, for that point. Thank you, Councillor Cornish. Um, I think one member may not have their microphone muted. We're getting feedback. They seem to be on a telephone. Please check. Um, Councillor Demir, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, it's not a question, but I just wanted to say that we mustn't forget that this is a supplementary planning document. I take on board everything that people have said, but I do think given uh, what has happened during uh, the COVID crisis, that our, all our towns, our, all our district towns and larger villages um, have got opportunities. There is going to be a benefit that people's working habits have changed and I don't think they'll go back. We won't be a commuter town. Hopefully we won't. And nor East Grinstead or Burgess Hill. People are going to want to live and work and play here. So I think there's a huge opportunity for all our leisure facilities and every retail restaurant company here. So I, I do welcome this because it is a supplementary planning document and we hope that this will now bring investment into all our towns here in the district because they're going to see that we're open we're open for them and a lot of firms might even want to relocate down here or across into the district rather than a huge one in Canary Wharf. Um, that was it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I'm sorry there wasn't a question in there. Thank you, Councillor Demir. Councillor Hillier, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'll be brief as some of my stuff's been covered. Um, uh, and I thought, uh, first, I'd like to commend Councillor Jackson. I thought his comments were very insightful uh, and uh, agree with them entirely. There's a bit of background, uh, many people will bear, that Hayward's Heath councillors have actually been working assiduously on this, probably as far back as 2011 through the Town Council. And in relation to some of the highways questions raised by Councillor Bates, you know, this was part, you know, part of the Atkins report commissioned by the County Council some years ago, informed some of the highways work. And whilst, yes, I can understand the sense that many of us feel that um, making such a road pedestrianised, i.e. the Broadway, sounds like a good idea. I would not like to be the councillor explaining to surrounding residents who've now got rat runs running past them, the fact of doing such a thing. There are, this is a very, very complex piece of work and a lot of stuff has been considered, um, including that. And you know, this is a starting point, as Councillor McNaughton rightly said, it's going to be built upon. Conversations will continue. Uh, and I know that those are happening privately amongst councillors, certainly about cycling. I'm somebody who is a cyclist. We really do want a proper cycling network in Hayward Heath. It doesn't lend itself to cycling, has a lot of steep hills. But I think as the advent of electric bikes become and has become more, I think ubiquitous is the right word, then, then our plan, we have to make sure that this plan is future proofing for that. And we also probably need to consider things like charging points in the town centres for such vehicles. So I commend this plan absolutely to members. It's a starting point. It's a clear signal, as Councillor Demir said, to those developers and inward investors that Haywards Heath has a vision, is open minded, and that this council will support those who are wanting to come and invest in the town and bring jobs. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Councillor McNaughton, do you have any comments or thoughts on the points raised by Councillors Cornish, Demir and Hillier? Yes, I, I, I think if I could just comment on Mr Cornish's in the first place, I've, I've actually tried to cover the bike issue and the cycleways. Um, it's very difficult at this stage to say 
what will happen and what will come forward about cycleways in, and where you want cycles to go. Do you want them mixing in with the pedestrians or not? So yes, we need, it will come forward at some time. But of course, going to Councillor De Meer's comments, this is a supplementary planning document, as I said in the very first place, in the outset. All other rules still apply. This is an indication of what we would like to happen and encourage businesses to come in. But it doesn't mean all the other rules and everything else that we have to do as a council go out the window. Those will be applied as well. This is just supplementary. We're pointing out where there is going to be opportunities, or we certainly hope there'll be opportunities, but it doesn't mean it's a free for all. They will still have to follow all the rules. Um, and Councillor Hillier, yes, I should have said from the outset, and I should have included West Sussex. There was a lot of consultation. I know this is done behind the scenes, and you know probably members weren't quite. Uh, they probably weren't as in involved as much in what was done by our cons consultants with county. So I apologise for that. Um, as for the more people biking in and the electric bike points, I thought we were all supposed to use bikes for health, not to... <laughs> but electric bikes are, are about and good luck. I mean, it gets people out anyway, so and in the fresh air and they don't take up too much room. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. Um, I see no further indications, so I will return now, please, to Councillor Band. You reserved your right, Councillor Band, as seconder. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to cross out half of what I wanted to say. The scrutiny team um, that sat twice, one, firstly in October and again in January, um, to examine, challenge and finesse the document that eventually emerged to, to, to council that was promoted for policy adoption. Um, the October vote by the committee was unanimous. Um, January, we had 12 for and two against. Um, so there's a fair degree of support. Um, I, I acknowledge the... Um, kind words and support that councillors Brown, Cartwright, uh, Bates, Jackson, Demir, Cornish, Hillier and councillor McNaughton have given to the policy tonight. It, it is after all an opportunity and a template to make and deliver a better town for the future's residents of Hayward Heath. They deserve this. Um, in essence, over the last few months, we've and the challenge we've seen that have been exacerbated by COVID have seen certain shops, it's certainly in South Road, close. But in the Broadway, we've seen five new businesses either plan to open or have opened. And so the vibrancy and the, in, and the in, inert um, economic um, support for the town is still there. And I, rec I can do nothing better than to recommend that the council um, moves to the motion that I'm seconding that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Band. Members, um, I'll now move us to the vote. And uh, you know the process with the yes, no buttons. And our 20 seconds starts now. Chairman, I'm trying to vote and I still can't vote. So that's Councillor Brunston. Thank you. I'm sure officers will record that. Thank you, Councillor Brunston. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we have 38 in favour of the recommendations on page 17 and two against. So that is carried. Thank you. Moving now to item nine on the agenda programme of meetings for 21-22. This has been withdrawn. Um, 
Mr. Clark, do you wish to add anything further to that? Uh, no, Chairman, save to say that the virtual meetings at the moment end on the 6th of May. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on now to item 10, Standards Committee Annual Report for 2020. And Councillor Bradbury, you are proposing this. Uh, correct, Chairman. Would you like me to speak now? Yes, indeed. Please do. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be incredibly brief. Uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, I'm sure colleagues have read the report and digested it. Uh, there has been a slight increase in the work of the stand. We always say with the Standards Committee, it's the one committee where the science, where the science got nothing to do, is a good sign. Um, but we have uh, we have um, uh, seen a slight increase in uh, in complaints, uh, mostly I think exacerbated by the use of uh, Zoom and similar technology to uh, to um, uh, to hold meetings. Um, but I, I think, the, generally speaking, the, uh, the, the, um, the, the committee has considered various government uh, proposals in respect of uh, improving uh, standards. Uh, we have uh, uh, considered those. We're awaiting further guidance from the government uh, in respect of uh, the, the uh, amended standards. Uh, and we will be considering those. Uh, hopefully we'll have those by our next meeting when we'll be considering them. Uh, I would also say, Chairman, that there is concern amongst members of the committee about some of the activities on social media. Uh, and therefore, uh, there is a, a move, I think, by uh, uh, members of the committee to uh, perhaps beef up is perhaps the right word, uh, the way that uh, um, uh, standards are upheld in respect of what uh, people do on social media. I think that's all I've got to say at the moment, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bradbury. And Councillor Webster, you are seconding this. I am indeed, Chairman, but I'd like to reserve my right in case indeed. anybody does want to speak. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, members? I see two indications straight away. Councillor Henwood, please. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. I think it's particularly appropriate that you are chairing this as, you, as you're concerned for standards. So I have a question about how this standards committee can be strengthened. If we refer to the Nolan principles of public life and we refer to our constitution on page 191, general obligations, you must treat others with respect. So my question is, how the Standards Committee can be strengthened so as to hold accountable a councillor when they put on Twitter the following comments about another councillor, and I quote, the poison of this pernicious entity drips into a section of Burgess Hill Society is relentless. Please may I have the response minuted. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, councillor Bradbury, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman, and thanks very much for your question, Councillor Henwood. I can't comment on individual uh, circumstances, and in any event, that's not a matter for the Standards Committee. Uh, individual uh, complaints are a matter for the Head of Regulatory Services, Mr Clark, uh, and I'm sure he will say the same as me, he can't comment on uh, in individual uh, cases. In respect of, you, you know, what, what do we need to strengthen the Standards Committee? Well, that's the work that the Standards Committee does all the time. And I would urge you, Councillor Henwood, uh, if you're concerned, to read through the minutes of some of the previous meetings so you can familiarise yourself, as, as perhaps you haven't done already, with some of the work that we're doing. Thank you, Councillor Bradley. Councillor Eaves, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, over the last year on the Standards Committee, I've learned quite a lot. I've learned, for example, that there is no penalty if a councillor does anything wrong. I've learned that a councillor is not in the wrong if he doesn't declare, he or she doesn't declare, before he does something, that he's a councillor. So if he has an episode of road rage, if he hasn't said, I'm a councillor, it doesn't count. 
uh, I've learned that despite our code of conduct rule 3.1, you must treat others with respect, as Councillor Henwood has said, that councillors can insult each other in this chamber and not be called up for it by the chair. And this has happened on at least three occasions. I have learned that a councillor can insult a member of our group gratuitously on Twitter with impunity. I've been told that this council has no standards problem and I've also been told repeatedly in the standards committee that we can't amend the code of conduct because it's a council um, a Sussex wide thing and it all has to be the same. Therefore, the question is, what are we doing in the standards committee and why does it even exist? I will, however, be voting in favour of this uh, report because like everything that issues from the standards committee, it is anodyne. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Eves. Councillor Cartwright, I'll take your question as well, please. Thank you. Um, it's, it's close to my heart, this, insofar as that I've, I've been chair of the Lib Dems um, for three years, and I succeeded Councillor Jackson, who has, did his stint as well. And I think that both of us really brought about, hopefully, a different attitude from the Lib Dems in uh, our council debate and the way we behave. And um, we very much want people to attack policy, but not the person. Um, I think that, you know, personally, I'm quite friend on friendly terms with quite a lot of conservative councillors. I mean, I disagree with their views, but as human beings, um, they are pleasant to a degree and uh, we get on all right. And uh, I think that's how we should behave ourselves um, as being all together, uh, working for the benefit of, of Mid Sussex. Um, I, no, I have a sort of supplementary point, which I want to ask uh, uh, the solicitor about, but essentially, I mean, I, I was looking at Facebook this morning and I came across Councillor Bradbury, who I <clears throat> find he is an aging rock star or the like from his personal thing. And he has some political comments on there or not. I'm not quite sure whether they were, but um, you know, in the f Facebook and social media are, are sort of fun spots and it's a bit difficult to untangle all these things. But from a technical point of view, now we're in Perda, it would be helpful actually uh, to get some definitive statement from the, the solicitor as you know what the heck are we supposed to be putting imprints on when it comes to you know people using their personal uh, 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 space on Facebook or Twitter or whatever to make points which uh, you know, politely might be considered as political and uh, <laughs> or might not be and uh, imprints from an agent's point of view are a nightmare anyway. Uh, so I would appreciate a, a bit of guidance from, 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 from Tom Clark on this one, if we can get it. Thank you. Thank you. I am not going to go to Mr. Clark. I do not want to make this a political point. Um, I, if Mr. Clark feels that there are issues, he will write out to all members. Um, but I will ask uh, Mr. Councillor Bradbury, if there are any comments on that, thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I don't want to get into any um, any pointed debate on this. Let us be clear that what we are here to do is to note that uh, report. Councillor Bradbury, please. Uh, yeah, I, I thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, in respect of Councillor Eve's comments, I, I, I actually agree with her in respect of sanctions. There is very little that the that can be done at the moment. Uh, 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 but as a member of the committee, she would know that we've commented that on that in our responses back to the government, that we would like to see, you know, uh, perhaps a, a, a more extended range of sanctions other than uh, at the moment, all we've got is a slap on the wrist or refer it to the police for prosecution. And I think you, Councillor Eves would agree that the committee, had, uh, despite the fact she said it's somewhat anodyne, which I personally wouldn't agree with, but but uh, I'm sure she would agree that we have made reference to that in our responses to the government. Uh, uh, and in respect, in, in response to uh, uh, Councillor Cartwright, and I thank you for his comments about my, uh, my guitar playing. Um, uh, I, I, I would say, though, I, I do think, uh, you, you know, your comments about conduct in the chamber, it is a political debate. Uh, and therefore, there, I think one has to expect a certain amount of rumbustiousness, shall we say, in that debate. I, I also, you know, uh, I, I have to believe that everyone comes into public life, as we've all done, for the best of reasons. 
uh, and I, I do believe we all want to do the best for our residents. Clearly, we disagree about uh, some of the ways of going about that, but I, I think we uh, we're probably all pointing in the you know in the same direction in respect of uh, of why we're uh, why we're doing this. I, I'm not going to try and answer your comments on imprints and the perda. I, I would suggest you take that offline with uh, Mr. Clark separately, if I may. Indeed. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Dudley. Um, Councillor Leband, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm, going to I'm going to actually respect what you've said about politics. Um, however, I, I really must, or I feel that it's my duty to actually challenge Council Councillor Cartwright's assertion that it's the Liberals, um, shall we say, mission to attack policy. And I'd, I'd, I'd rather give him the opportunity to actually rephrase that and uh, to the word and use the word challenge. Because, and, and I accept his integrity that we are all here to serve the community, uh, but we are not here to attack policy. Thank you. I, 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 Councillor Cartwright, I've not asked you to respond. Um, so let us move on now to Councillor Jackson, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's well recognised. Uh, both within the principal authority sector and the town and parish sector, that there are insufficient sanctions about people who break the code of conduct. Um, certainly when I was chairman of the NAP, National Association of Local Councils Policy Committee, that was something we were pushing government to um, strengthen the, the um, sanctions against people who misbehaved. And I would like to ask whether through the district council through their local government association could do the same to put a recommendation to the government to toughen up the sort of sanctions that are embodied in the sanctions regime. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Uh, Councillor Bradbury, do you have any comment on that? Well, I, 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 Chairman, thank you. I believe I've already, I, I've already answered that, that the Standards Committee has made uh, its responses to the government and said, uh, that in common with, I think, many other councils, uh, we think that there should be a broader range of sanctions. Okay, fine. Right. Um, I am seeing no further indications on this. So, Councillor Webster, you reserved your right. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, I think Councillor Bradbury has covered the issue of the response that this council made to government in terms of wanting to see some form of um, stronger sanction and um, some teeth. Um, <clears throat> I think he's quite right about the political debate. Um, I think that um, th there have been some unfortunate statements made um, tonight in terms of social media insults. Um, because there, there have been social media insults all around, um, which unfortunately the Standards Committee can't do much about. Um, and there was a particularly um, unhelpful round of social media insults with the Clare Hall um, um, situation and um, I certainly want to move on from that, and I want us to be able to sit down, ideally, around the table and hear um, comments from a wide variety of people with respect. And I always, at the beginning of every council meeting, take note of the prayer that starts with um, asking for the grace to listen to an to, to one another with respect. And um, I, I hope that will um, happen more in the future generally. But in terms of this particular report, you are quite right, Chairman. It is simply for noting, and I have no hesitancy in recommending, in, in seconding that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Webster. I would certainly um, support greater respect. Um, members, I now move us to the vote on this. Um, 
The standards report is covered in pages 35 to 38 of your pack, and the recommendation is on page 35 to note the report. Um, can you please use your yes, no buttons to now do so? You have 20 seconds. Thank you. So, members, we have 42 in favour, none against. So, that is carried or noted. Thank you. Um, moving now to item 11 Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy for 2021 22 to 23 24. This is going to be proposed by Councillor Pulfer. Councillor Pulfer, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've got a uh, pleasure in bringing this to uh, Councillor's attention. Um, this was robustly discussed at the Scrutiny Committee. And th that being so, I would bring to you the recommendation that the committee has re uh, recommended to propose that the Council agree, uh, and I won't read it all out, merely to say for Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 3, and Roman 4. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Pulfer. Um, and just to emphasize that the strategies on pages 39 to 74 of your packs and those points that Councillor Pulfer mentioned are on page 39. Thank you. Councillor Llewellyn Burke, you're seconding this. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to reserve my right to speak. Indeed, thank you. Members. And I'm seeing no notifications. So I'm, uh, in fact, I have one notification. Councillor Gibson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, while I'm searching for the relevant paragraph that is my question, I'd just like to congratulate you on your uh, year of uh, managing this meeting so well. No, I can't find it, but I know what the question was. It was that, um, oh, here we are in table on page 48, we are asked to um, approve an authorized, sorry, approve the authorized limit of debt up from 28 million to 30 million. And, and I just wondered why. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Um, as the uh, Councillor Wellen Burke is the portfolio holder for this, so I will move to Councillor Wellen Burke for an answer, please. Thank you. It, it's a legal requirement um, that we have to have the appropriate level of debt in accordance with SIPFA regulations. And if you'd like a detailed written answer about the sums to it, um, Councillor Gibson, I'd be quite happy to do so. Thank you, Councillor Wellenberg. Councillor Stockwell, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to say that uh, I was part of the Scrutiny Committee and spent quite some time debating uh, the papers. Um, for the um, management strategy, treasury management strategy, and the annual investment strategy, and I have absolutely no no doubt that I, I would recommend it to the to the council to um, agree. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Stockwell. Again, I'm seeing no further notifications, so I move to Councillor Wellin Burke, please, who's seconding this. Um, thank you, Chairman. I was um, observing at the audit committee and saw the robust discussions uh, and, and quite detailed questions, um, particularly about um, item uh, two, two in the summary. Uh, and I'm uh, happy to second um, the report. Thank you. Thank you, thank Councillor Wellenberg. So, members, I now move us to the recommendations on page 39 and ask you to use your yes, yes no buttons to vote on those. Thank you. 20 seconds starts now. <clears throat> Okay. 
voting time has passed. We're waiting the result. So we have 42 in favour, none against, so that is carried. <clears throat> Thank you. Moving now to item 12 to receive the leader's report. Councillor Ash Edwards, please. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. I'll uh, be as brief as I can be. Um, as members will know, we're now going through the uh, stages of the Prime Minister's roadmap for reopening off to lockdown and heading towards the reopening of more of our economy and indeed the, the phased reopening um, of our leisure centres from uh, mid-April. Um, and we will need to turn our, our attention, as we did last year, to uh, the safe reopening of our towns and, and our larger villages. Um, and in that vein, we've received £130,000 from the government's Welcome Back Fund, um, which, like the reopening High Streets Fund last year, uh, will help us with steps to uh, support the, self, the safe reopening um, and bringing back to life uh, of our town and, and village centres. And from, chair, from tomorrow, Chairman, the restart grants that were announced uh, by the Chancellor in the budget up to £18,000 uh, will be available in Mid-Sussex. And over the last year, a heroic job has been done getting millions of pounds of financial support to small businesses in our district. Uh, and we now have a final piece of work uh, to ensure that the retail, leisure and hospitality businesses that will be eligible uh, for the restart grants uh, can claim that money and help them uh, reopen and uh, begin to thrive again. Of course, all of that is underpinned uh, by the progress in the vaccination uh, programme, which is going great guns. Uh, data published last week by the NHS uh, showed that over 65,000 residents in Mid-Sussex District have now received their first jab, which is excellent news, uh, and I'm sure that pace will continue uh, over the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, there was very brief re uh, reference earlier, Chairman, uh, when the, the programme of meetings was withdrawn uh, to uh, the future of our meetings, um, in that the government has confirmed that it will not be extending the legal powers for our uh, virtual meetings and, and the ability to make decisions uh, over Zoom as we've been doing for um, the, the recent months. Um, and so the legal power for that uh, ends uh, in the first week in May. Uh, group leaders will know this, but work is being done uh, to consider the implications of that uh, for Mid-Sussex and, and our decision-making uh, abilities uh, after that date. Some of that, of course, depends on the outcome of a, a legal challenge uh, that's likely to be in High Court towards the end um, of April. Um, but, but further information will, of course, be discussed with, uh, with group leaders uh, when that uh, is possible to do so. Uh, and finally, Chairman, uh, members might be aware that following the debate a couple of meetings ago, I think it was, uh, in relation to the first stage of the uh, boundary review of Mid-Sussex District, uh, the Local Government Boundary Commission have now commenced the first uh, stage consultation and are inviting proposals uh, from the public uh, for ward patterns for Mid-Sussex District on the basis that there will be 48 councillors uh, representing the district council uh, in the future and that consultation process runs to the end of May uh, and there'll be further consultation uh, periods uh, later this year uh, and the commission is working towards a new set of boundaries being uh, agreed and in place uh, early next year chairman happy to take any questions thank you councillor Vass Edwards and I am seeing no notifications so we move swiftly on now to the Deputy Leader, Councillor Llewellyn Burke. Councillor Llewellyn Burke, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to inform members that despite the ongoing pandemic, leases are continuing to be agreed in the orchards Haywards Heath, uh, which as you know is owned by the Council. And smaller everyday transactions are continuing um, to be processed and are underway. And these include the stone quarry uh, post office, which was closed um, in, East, in East Grinstead, and local ward members have worked very hard to retain it um, for community use, and the local RSL is working with our team to achieve this. With regard to the place and connectivity um, transport infrastructure in Burgess Hill, uh, I'm pleased to report that the MSDC, or Mid-Sussex District Council, sorry, led schemes, um, are, are doing well with the town-wide connectivity scheme 35% um, through its way and um, with the Green Circle 41% uh, and Councillor Demir is going to report on the fibre infrastructure in that area. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you Councillor Wellenberg. 
And again, I'm seeing no hands raised. So we move now on to uh, Councillor Hillier, please, Cabinet Member for Economic Growth. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I will also try and be succinct. Um, oh. Well, we've moved on. Councillor Eves, um, your notification I noticed after that, but uh, we have moved on. So please put your question to Councillor uh, Llewellyn Burke in writing, but we have moved on now. Thank you. Councillor Hillier. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, obviously, the economy team have been incredibly busy supporting the whole grants process. Uh, and uh, I'm very grateful also to my colleagues, Councillors Webster and Belsey, for their work on the grants panel. The um, COVID recovery grants, the, the monies that were very generously and wisely provided by this council, I'm happy to say that 42 businesses have received, um, have been awarded 159k. They haven't received it yet. They have to do the work and invoice. But that is a huge commitment to our business community. And I'm very fortunate uh, in that I obviously speak with lots of businesses and the praise for the council and its officers in respect of what they've done for the grants uh, is superb. The reputation of this council has been massively enhanced by this whole process. So I am very grateful to all concerned, and we do have um, the right to be very proud. Um, in relation to the bigger picture, members are aware, obviously, that shortly work will be starting on merging the sustainability and the economy strategies, which I think is very good and very exciting and a reflection of this uh, administration's commitment, all of our, all of our commitment, to the environment. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of initiatives going on to try and support businesses out of recovery. Um, so there's uh, Pan West Sussex initiatives in relation to um, providing uh, training and support and guidance to independent retailers. Um, there, are, there is the Hot House Project, which is a partnership working with the University of Chichester, again, supporting startups and um, smaller businesses to help them plan their growth. Uh, great partnership working again with the DWP in terms of supporting the kickstart, which is very much about doing what we can to help our younger people get into work during these different times. Um, so uh, I think that's all very, very good. Um, small snippet of news uh, in relation to the rolling inspections that we have of our car parks across that we are responsible for um, all 17 have um, been re-awarded their park mark which is very good news indeed and for those that are wondering I know this question's come up before just for those that don't recall in relation to those of our car parks that don't have their park mark this is all going to be falling work that's going to fall within the parking strategy and as we look at investment strategies um, it will be assessed what can be done to bring all of our car parks up to standard, obviously making sure that the decisions are reflect good value for money. And, and the final snippet is I'm very glad and um, appreciative of officers that we have restarted the business newsletter. And that went out to, I think, one just over 1000 businesses in February. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much, Chairman. Happy to have questions. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. I am seeing no questions. So we move on now to uh, Councillor Demir, Cabinet Member for Customer Services. Cabinet, uh, Councillor Demir, please. It's Cabinet here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, good evening. Hi to everyone. Uh, okay. Um, on the revenue and benefits side, they, as you can imagine, have been more than extremely busy assuring that businesses apply for and but are also paid as quickly as possible for what were 13 grants which have been on offer from the government. Um, I think you probably are aware we've received over 50 million of these. So I do applaud the commitment they've made in trying to reach as many as possible. Um, we've also just recently taken on to temporary extra staff to contact the, the hard to reach people. And that does seem to be working really well. Like we had 72 extra today, 76 yesterday. Um, but I would just flag up to you that when we finished here, if you know of anyone that hasn't applied, please tell them to do it by midnight tonight the 31st of March. Um, we're also dealing with minimal benefits, of course, 
Uh, our council tax support scheme will continue for the next financial year, together with the up to £150 hardship grant, which is awarded automatically to those eligible, and the test and trace support of £500. Uh, the teams, as uh, our leader has said, will continue after tomorrow when the restart grants start. Um, so all is happening. Uh, on the con side, the latest issue of Mid Sussex Matters has now landed on everybody's doorstep. Well, everybody's except mine, actually, for some reason. Um, but our comms team have been busy promoting the business grants, the rewilding of the 30 locations, and more importantly, perhaps, the benefit of having the COVID vaccination, not to mention a plethora of promotions regarding the new restart grant, the proposed reopening of the high street, as people have commented on, which we hope will happen after the 12th of April. And I do hope you've been taking a note of the information we now publish on MIS for our compliments and complaints. In February, we had 49 compliments and only nine concerns. And that's it for me, it's apart from finally to conclude with, as ever, some really good news, which is that our full fibre broadband scaffold will be completed around Burgess Hill by mid-April, and the route to Hayward Seas and on to Horsham and Crawley by the end of June. This means that via the cooperative network infrastructure, we will be BT, for want of a better word, and already commercial companies are in discussion with us. So hopefully businesses will begin to see the benefits from May and the residents hopefully by the end of the summer. Um, so happy Easter to you all, but I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor De Mere. Uh, I see none. I do see one from Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my question is um, regarding um, compliments and complaints. Um, can you tell me, uh, Councillor De Mere, how, uh, how, the met how they are metricated? What, what measure do you use to come to, the, to come to those totals, the 49 and 9? Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Demir, please. Thank you, Councillor Brown, for your question. Well, they're either a complaint or a compliment, but if you would like to know the actual workings out of them, I'm happy to send that to you or send it to all the councillors. Thank you, Councillor Demir. I'm sure some may be interested, but these things are covered on a regular basis on the scrutiny committee. Could um, I just add, Mr Chairman, that it's actually broken down into which departments, and if I could just add, I apologise for butting in, and each compliment or concern is shared with the relevant business unit leader. So they know what they're doing well and what they're not. Thank you, Councillor Demir. I see no further indications. So we will now move on, please, to Councillor John Belsey, Cabinet Member for Environment and Service Delivery. Councillor Belsey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a few things from my side in terms of portfolio matters. Uh, I did want to highlight that I did have one of what are fairly regular, albeit remote meetings at the moment, with Mid-Sussex officers and the Serco team last week. I just wanted to provide some reassurance to members that even through the pandemic, there remains a lot of focus on how the service is operating and how it can be improved, what feedback is being received. And indeed, the discussions can get quite granular in terms of service specifics, as well as looking at what the service has achieved as a whole. And the reason for mentioning this feedback in particular is to say that considering the constraints of the pandemic within which our officer team 
and our Circo teams have been operating. The feedback from residents on our waste service remains really outstanding. And I did want to pay gratitude to that service team again for all that they have done in the last 12 months in the most difficult of circumstances. In respect of our parks, consultants are finalising the master plans and costings for our park improvements to Victoria Park, Mount Noddy, St John's and the Hemsleys or Finch's Field. And we should be in a position to provide updates on those before too long. Those consultants will also be looking at the next couple of park master plans in the course of this new financial year. And this is in addition to the work being done on improving play areas in certain other parks. I'm sure along with many members, we are looking forward to leisure centres reopening from 12th of April. And with Places Leisure, we will be providing more publicity on this over the next couple of weeks. And finally, I'm delighted to be supporting Mid-Sussex's work to create more rewilding areas in Mid-Sussex. And we will have nearly 30 areas across Mid-Sussex this year. This is in coordination with a wider national rewilding Britain campaign. We have listened to feedback in terms of what areas did and did not work well last time. So mm. St John's Park area is now removed. But I'm very pleased we've been able to add many new areas to the rewilding list. Now I appreciate feedback is not universally positive about the initiative. I never think it is with new and different initiatives, but thank you to the many residents and councillors who have been positive about it. And I look forward to seeing how the initiative develops over the summer and in hopefully in future years on most sites and across even more parts of Mid-Sussex. We will be updating our website uh, with more information for the public on this initiative and what we're hoping to achieve with our sites as part of the national campaign. I'm happy to take any questions, Chairman. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you Councillor Belsey. We have one indication from Councillor Henwood. Councillor Henwood, please. I, I just wanted to thank the uh, team for listening to the Burgess Hill councillors that, dis that did not want St. John's Park rewilded. And I thank you very much for taking that on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henwood. And Councillor Eves, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Belsey, for the report. Um, I can corroborate the fact that we're getting a uh, nuanced reaction because the in the last few days, we've been turf stripping in Burgess Hill and doing some, I wouldn't call it rewilding, but something very similar there. Most people are very enthusiastic, however. I wonder if you could send through a list of the 30 locations, because I'd be interested to know where they were. And can you make sure that Burgess Hill Town Council have received the locations because they didn't receive them initially? Only the ward councillors got their ward locations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Eves. Uh, Councillor Belsey, please. John, I think, Councillor Belsey, I think you're muted. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I'm happy to uh, ensure that uh, it did go toward members. Uh, Councillor Eves is correct, but I'm sure we can make sure that relevant parishes and town councils are aware which sites have been selected. Indeed, that would be most useful. Thank you. Councillor Bradbury. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman. Just very briefly, just as the Council's representative on the uh, high wheeled area of outstanding natural beauty, uh, and indeed I have the pleasure to be the Vice Chairman of that august body now, uh, just if I could urge the Cabinet member when he's uh, uh, continuing his rewilding project, which has got full support, uh, but he, he might well want to encourage officers to have contact with the high wheeled AOMB. I'm sure we'll be happy to advise on the types of planting and rewilding that are most suitable. Thank you, Councillor Bradbury. I'm sure that will be noted. Um, members, I see no further indications for Councillor Belsey, so we move on now to Councillor Webster, Cabinet Member for Community. Councillor Webster, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, we finished the year on 135 disabled facility grant completions um, versus 137 last year, which is quite a remarkable achievement given the COVID restrictions and that many of these grants are for work that is done in the homes of elderly or disabled residents, often with multiple long-term conditions and therefore shielding. Um, I recently met with uh, via Zoom with the new chief executive and a trustee of Citizens Advice West Sussex. It was a very worthwhile meeting in which we discussed our community champions project 
for black and minority ethnic groups. Given the publication today of a somewhat controversial report by the government's independent commission on race and ethnic minorities, I suspect involvement in our community champions group will grow. But I particularly want to thank Councillor Hussein for his involvement in the community champions group, along with a range, a growing range of community leaders. Items discussed in our citizens advice meeting included the work commissioned by West Sussex County Council to better understand bereavement experiences in the COVID pandemic. Of course, domestic abuse and rogue landlord evictions halted by government intervention during the pandemic and employment issues were also discussed. Then naturally following on reduced employment are problems around uh, and problems around finance and mounting debt. Mental health issues, especially amongst younger people and more hidden in middle-aged men required training for um, the CAB staff and their volunteers. And this of course falls under the important heading of safeguarding. Citizens Advice are increasingly involved in the Kickstart program to help young people back into work. They also work with the Hope Job Club based in East Grinstead. They currently face having to reinvigorate their volunteer workforce, who in some cases have moved on to other interests during COVID. Chairman, I'm pleased that this council has such an active and successful Mid-Sussex Partnership Board, where many of these issues are addressed through multi-agency work and that we support citizens' advice through an annual grant. And Chairman, if I may, I should have thanked Councillor Bradbury for his chairmanship of the Standards Committee over the past year. Um, but thank you, Chairman. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Councillor Webster. Um, I see no indications for Councillor Webster. So we move on now to Councillor McNaughton, Cabinet Member for Housing and Planning. Ca Councillor McNaughton, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I shall be reasonably brief. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the whole of the Council for in, uh, accepting the Hayward Heath Town Centre Master Plan. And <clears throat> officers and myself have heard all the comments that were made about things that people might want done. So I will keep looking at it, but I will move on. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm pleased to report that after the delayed start to the first, lock, because of the first lockdown, and as you know, we actually achieved no social housing at all in the first three months, but we have achieved over 300 units of affordable housing. It's just over 300. I don't have the final figure for this month, but we now are, are over the 200, sorry. Um, and the final figure has not yet been confirmed, but I will update it, update you when I receive it. I don't think it'll be that many more, but as I say, you know, we have done again this year more than 200 units. The planning department continues to achieve its targets. Um, you know, there's very little I can add to that. They, they are doing their jobs and a lot of people are re working remotely, but everything seems to be, yeah, well, it is, not seems to, it is continuing and achieving all their targets. Um, I would like to comment on, in relation to the site allocation DPD, which is exam at examination. Some parishes and members are calling our officers about the examination and all the information is available on the web page, website. So please use it as our officers are busy preparing the examination, which is due to start shortly. Unfortunately, we still don't have a date yet. Again, I will let you know as soon as that. 
the only reason I'm commenting on that is that <clears throat> in part of in part of everything that I do do, I was got some some research and councils that don't have a five year land supply, or then no, they don't have a their five year plan. There's they are out of date, and it's amazing. Some of them, the big ones, we got Lewis, who are at the end of their five year plan. Brighton and Hove. Again, there's is just coming up to be out of date. And the one that is out of date completely is Chichester. I mention it because that's how important our officers are having to work on the DPD. And not only are they working on the DPD that is out of examination, so that document actually belongs to the inspector. So, you know, we can't and we can't we 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 can't uh, understand what he's going to say yet about anything on it. So it's a bit sensitive to ask questions. But what I would say is that they're still collating and looking at the call for sites that have come forward. And of course, that is another massive piece of work. And we do have limited amount of staff dealing with all these. So as I say, it's not a nag. It's just please try not to um, interrupt them at the moment while they are trying to get everything in front of an examiner and get the best possible outcome. I mean, a DPD work is something that we need to main keep to maintain our five-year land supply, what the inspector told us to do. You know, we can all disagree on different sites. It's now in the hands of the inspectors, not mine or anybody else's. He will make the decision and we will see what comes back. So really, Chairman, that, that's it. I'm happy to take any questions. Indeed. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. I have a couple of indications. Firstly, Councillor Bronson, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my questions, my two questions um, are around the site allocations document and reference to the sites that are in my division in Imber Imberhorn. Um, my first question is, could the, count, could the Cabinet member give me a reason why the District Council chose not to put the wording that the County Council officers for highways had put forward as a proposal which would effectively have uh, put into the DPD that the uh, sites for East Grinstead would be subject to an appropriate transport measure being found. That's my first question. My second question is around, would he not agree that the WSP document, a document that was paid for by West Sussex, Surrey, Tandridge and Mid Sussex, is of vital importance and a public interest document and as such the findings of which dictate a very different transport scenario than the one that is currently being put forward in the transport documents for the DPD for sites in East Grinstead. Does he not agree with me that it is vitally important that this information is made available at the examination and will he do everything in his power to ensure that this information is made available at that public inquiry? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bronson. Um, a very, well, ward and division specific question. Um, Councillor McNaughton, do you have any comments on that or would you be, prefer to go back in writing on it? No, I'm quite happy to, to say that, uh, you know, this like the DPD we're talking about, East Grinch did. Uh, yes, we put sites forward. Uh, the transport issues, you know, every planning application has to uh, overcome any transport difficulties. The SPD, yes, I understand what's being said, but at the moment, the only time that can come forward is when the inspector asks for comments. And he will, if he believes there's anything that we need to report to him, that is what our officers will have to do every time he asks a question. It's down to them to field those questions. And, you know, we, we the DPD, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to go into individual sites or anything. 
because it's now with an inspector. And that is as far as I can go, as I see. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. Councillor Gibson, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, um, it, it's very good news on the affordable housing numbers. Um, obviously, it'd be better if they were higher. Um, and I fully support the need to um, retain the ability to demonstrate a five-year housing land supply and keep the current position of holding a district plan. Uh, does Councillor McNaughton uh, um, agree that the, it's equally important to meet the three-year delivery test? And can he say whether or not we, he expects us to be in a position to meet that test in the current year? Um, and I believe that his reference to the call for sites referred to the, the work that we're doing towards the district plan review during 2023 and not the DPD. If it, and, that. and I just wonder if he will agree that um, the 2023 review is the right way to take a fresh look at SIL policies and in particular to try and address the anomaly, anomaly where um, single property developments pay nothing towards the communities that they are adding to. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we'll handle that before we go to Councillor Bates, if we may, there's, there's a fair amount of detail there. Councillor McNaughton, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. G Councillor Gibson. The three-year delivery test, yes. Um, we, we were challenged on this as a slight in in um, Halstead Canes, as you know, and the inspector found in our favour. And our delivery at the moment is exceptionally good. I don't know if it's a sudden rush, but I, I watch in amazement to how many people are joining the electoral register on a development in my own ward. And, you know, we're getting 600 houses and there's people moving every single day. There's more people coming in, which is good. They're selling them. The vast majority are still being sold off plan. And, you know, people say nothing's selling. Believe you me, it's selling there. Um, but yes, the call for sites, a new one, is for the review of the district plan. And to be quite honest, <coughs> I'm sure we'll have something <laughs> for sale by then. Government keep messing about. But yes, I understand people's feeling on, on SIL. We started so long ago on, on it and everything keeps changing and I'm sure sooner or later we'll get to it, but it, it, it's something that will, will be reviewed within the district plan. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. I think I was on a working party for SIL probably in 2012 um, or thereabouts. It does seem to have been going on forever. Um, Councillor Bates, please. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, a bit more parochial, but um, read in the press, there's been a big surge in planning applications. I mean, albeit, I think a lot of them are domestic, but um, are the district uh, planning service able to cope with possibly the surge in Miss Essex? Thank you, Councillor Bates. Um, I'll go to Councillor Cartwright before we answer that. Councillor Cartwright, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I noted uh, Councillor McNaughton's um, interest in social housing when he was uh, talking about the district plan. And I was wondering, um, we, we always talk about affordable housing, which is a great misnomer because it's housing which most people can't afford. Um, but social housing is still very much deeply needed in, 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 in the district. And I was wondering what progress we were making with, with providing social housing as opposed to affordable housing. Interesting. Thank you, Councillor Cartwright. Uh, Councillor McNaughton, please, those two points. Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bates, uh, about the planning, you know, more planning applications coming in. I do watch the amount of planning applications that are coming in. And yes, our, our D DM team are managing and will manage if anything really changed or we saw a significant shift, we obviously would, would be looking to do something about it. But no, we're quite happy that we will cope. Um, Councillor Carl, right? Yes, I think I've probably confused you and I should be more accurate. I do apologize. What I mean by the, when I, I should say, these are, these are social houses for rent. 
which go to the, our, our, our social landlords. And a lot of them, the social landlords, pick them up straight from the developer. Once they're built out, they then use those as, we call them affordable, it's a misnomer. They are social houses, they are for rent. Some will be shared equity, but the shared equity, as you know, is included in affordable and social. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton. Okay, members, I see no further notifications. So we move on now. And item 14, questions from members pursuant to Council Procedure Rule 10.2, we have none. So we reach the end of this, my final council meeting as chairman. As I said earlier, um, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve this council. Um, but we move on now and move on to fresh challenges. So I think I said once before on a previous council meeting that I would close a council meeting using naval bells and watches. You probably don't know that I uh, was due to go to Dartmouth College years and years ago, but uh, I, for certain circumstances couldn't do so. But if I don't close the council meeting now using that, I never will. So. I close this council meeting formally at 14 minutes to eight bells in the second dog watch. Thank you, members, and good evening. Good evening, thank you. All the best, wish you all the best. <laughs>